Alright everyone, so in this video we're going to create a very high-tech looking background by creating some simple 3D elements all from scratch right here inside Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is I'm working on a black background layer and that's because of visibility. I want to be able to see what I'm doing and the, the effect I'm going to be generating is better seen against a dark background. So I'm going to go in, into my layers palette and create a new layer above that black layer. I'm going to go over here to my toolbar and select the elliptical marquee tool, which is this rounded one here. And right up to the left side here, I'm going to hold down my Option and Shift key, which would be Alt-Shift on the PC. And I'm just going to draw a small circular selection right about like that. Now I'm going to go over here and get my Gradient tool. And click on that once, and I'm also going to click in the Gradient Preview up here, and it will give me my Gradient Editor. And we'll go down here and select this gradient right here. And I'm not selecting it for its color, but its range of tones here. Now, certainly I could create this from scratch, but why not go ahead and use this since it's already created? And I'll just remove the color information. So I'll just hit OK. And inside that selection, I'm going to hold down my Shift key and draw from the top of that circle to the very bottom of it, just like that. So there it is filled in that selection. And like I said, I don't need the color, so I'm going to go ahead and press Shift-Command-U or Shift-Control-U that will remove the color information. Now let's deselect. I'm going to darken that up a little bit by bringing up my levels. Press Command L. I'm just going to push this dark slider over that. Give me a little bit of shadow in there, or a little bit more contrast in there, as it were. And I'll just hit OK. Now, I'm going to go and get my Move tool. And I'm just going to hold down the Option Command or Alt Control key. And I see I get those double arrows, allowing me to drag and drop a copy. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down along with it to constrain my down movement and just drag, whoop, click and drag a copy just below there. And what you'll see is over here in the layers palette, it's created a new layer for that new object. So now I have two instances of this shape on their own layers. And I'm going to do it again a third time and again a fourth time. So now I have four shapes all on their own individual layers. I'm going to go to my Paths palette, and here I've drawn the paths that I'm going to use. And wh what I need to do here is actually just kind of maneuver these. I want the end point of this path to be dead center of that circle for each one. So I'm going to position each one of these paths in place. And I need to go ahead and draw my fourth path in here. And let's get my Path tool, and I'm just going to click a point right in the center there. And we'll just kind of draw a shape out here and just go right off the edge of the document there. So now I've got all my paths in place. These paths are going to be used to generate the next effect we're about to do, which is, I'm going to go over here to the Smudge tool, which is located where the Blur and Sharpen tool are. We have the Smudge tool right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off these paths for now. If you go into Paths Palette, which is grouped with your layers, you can click in that open area and it will deactivate the paths. So going back into the layers, I want to select that top layer here. So I'm just going to command click directly on it, and it will activate that layer. I'm going to get that smudge tool. I'm going to go up here where my options are. I'm going to leave mode to normal, and I want to set the strength to 100%. I want it to, want it to affect this all the way. And my brush size, I'm keeping it just a little bit smaller than the shape itself. Here I have it set to 60. And here's another important thing. It needs to be a hard edge brush. So if it's not a hard edge and it's soft, simply hold down the shift key and press your right bracket key until it gets a nice hard edge. Now, with all those settings set on my smudge tool, if I just click inside here and drag, you'll kind of see the effect I'm going to be going for. And that works pretty good. So let's go back to the paths palette. And since I'm on this particular layer, in fact, I'm going to drag the paths palette out here so I can see the Layers Palette and the Paths at the same time. So in that Paths Palette, I'm going to take the Path Select tool and select that first path. I'm going to go under the submenu here and go to Stroke Subpath. And we want to make sure that we, we've got all these tools that we can select from here. I want to make sure that the Smudge tool is selected. I'll just go ahead and leave Simulate Pressure on. And then I'll hit OK and watch what happens. It will take that Smudge tool and draw that effect along that path. And what, look at the result. I'm getting what looks like a seemingly three-dimensional tube here. Pretty interesting effect. Let's go ahead and do that to the rest of them. Let's go in here, select this path. And since it's already applied that effect once using that brush, all I need to do at this point is simply 
click on the stroke button right here at the very bottom for all the other ones. But you got to make sure you're on the right layer. Let's go back to our layers palette and activate that next layer, which is that one, of course. So that path is selected. Just hit the stroke, and there it is applied that effect. Let's select the next layer and the next path, then click that stroke button again. And again, for the last one, select that path there, click the stroke button. So there we have our 3D tubes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and merge all these onto their own layer. Let's turn off those paths. I'm going to go ahead and merge these down onto their own, or just onto one layer. So selecting all the layers by holding down the Shift key and then press Command or Control E, we'll compress them down to their own layer. Now, a little bit of white edging here that's going on. I want to kind of get rid of that. So I'm going to go under the layer menu down to matting to defringe. And let's enter about 10 pixels just so it takes care of all that. And you'll see those edges completely go away. So now we have nice smooth tubing going on here. And look at that. It looks like it's a nice three-dimensional effect. So now I'm going to drag in a really cool background that I have on this other image in here. Let's drag that on there and drag it beneath my tube effect. Now we're going to distort this tube effect, so selecting that layer, bring up the free transform by pressing Command or Control T. Then I'm bring up the submenu by holding down my Control key or right-clicking directly on that object and go and select Distort. And I'm just going to grab each one of these corner handles and distort this shape and give it a great deal of perspective. Let's make this end really blow out there. And bring that in there, just like that. And then I'll press Enter. So now we see we've got a pretty cool perspective along with our 3D tubes. Zoom in a little bit here. Now I'm simply going to change the blending mode of this layer to hard light. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer and change its blending mode to overlay. So it's kind of a more subtle effect in there. But I'm going to do one more thing to this overlay layer. I'm going to go under the filter menu and go down to Artistic Plastic Wrap. And this will kind of give me a really plastic look of these tubes. You see in the preview here, look at that effect I'm getting there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these settings. You can see the highlight strength is at 20, detail at 1. I probably can increase that up a little bit, give me a little bit more interesting look. And to smooth this, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 15. And just hit OK. And you can see the result there, getting a nice kind of a plastic sheen to this. It looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to finish this off by going back to that original tube layer, double-clicking on that layer icon to bring up the layer styles, or I can simply go into the effects menu here, and we're going to apply an outer glow. And we'll get out of that default yellow. Let's go over here and select white, and I hit OK. I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer style to overlay, and I'm going to increase that size up a little bit. You can see that effect that we're getting there, so it's interacting with that background and giving me a nice variation. And then hit OK. And that pretty much is it. If I go over here and drop some text in, Dimension. Gone ahead and created a really cool 3D tubing effect, all with right there inside of Photoshop.